Okay, welcome back to Free America. Today we're going to talk about the Russell Green River Knives. The, Gross the Russell Green River Knives are significant um, in the history of American cutlery. Uh, John Russell started his cutlery business um, in 1832, approximately. Uh, could be 1831. Records, you know, kind of conflict. But um, and he started that in a um, in a factory in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Now, at that point in American history, when the West was just starting to open up, um, most of the knives that frontiersmen and uh, mountain men and trappers and so forth carried west um, were imported from either uh, England or uh, or Germany so John Russell with the Green River Knife Works was actually able to make uh, a considerable dent um, in in the uh, market for imported knives um, and as a as a result um, the Russell Green River Works is still in business uh, today. So you do the math, that's a long time. Um, what we have here in front of us are two of the, uh, of the most popular knives. And this is the uh, five and a half inch Hunter. Um, these knives, and, and this is the Daddly, right? It's called a Daddly knife. So these knives both have carbon steel blades they come with uh, wood grips. I'm not sure exactly what it is. This looks to be a walnut. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. This could be also walnut. This could be walnut sapwood, and this could be walnut heartwood. Um, uncertain, but they're textured, and they have three rivets. So when you get the um, uh, old hickory knives, they only have two rivets, and they're not textured. So. So that's, that's good. Now, the one thing I want to say about these knives um, is initially, right, right out of the box, these, both of these knives were absolutely hair-popping, shaving sharp. I, I couldn't have asked for a better edge on these knives. And then I used both of them to um, clean some fish and to process some, some meat and some vegetables. Uh, and with these two knives, I made feather sticks, and you would be, have been able to see all of that. Unfortunately, my first few attempts at making this video uh, all failed. So, <laughs> for that, I apologize. Um, if you want to make uh, fire sticks, uh, I mean feather sticks, you know, to, uh, to start your one stick fire, these knives are, are there for you. Um, right out of the box. Now, what they don't come with is uh the sheets so they don't come with sheets so um i got both of these from crazy crow uh trading and crazy crow uh sells sheath kits where you can you can purchase a kit and make your own sheath or you can you can buy uh you know and uh, another sheath or something like that um so i bought a sheath for for this knife i don't have it yet um, it's a dangler. Uh, I bought a sheath for this knife. Um, it's really inexpensive. Uh, I, I don't think it even cost me ten dollars. Um, you know, for what it is, uh, you get what you pay for, right? Um, but it does the trick. I'm not super crazy about it, but. Uh, that was my choice to buy it that way so okay so very happy with these knives uh, I, I recommend them so on the flip side of that let me tell you what I don't like about them the first thing that I don't like about both of these knives is is the size of the handles now uh, in my hand these knives are, are too short all right it's it's uncomfortable for me um, because of the short length of the handle and also because they're so thin so so they're also the hunter is a little bit thicker 
but they're pretty thin, right? So for for a guy like me uh, with a hammer hammer grip on this thing, I mean it's it's barely there. Um, so when I want to choke up on it and, and do some close work, uh, I don't feel as secure as I could, right? Mostly, again, because these blades are super sharp, and um, without a, without a sizable handle on there, I'm just not entirely comfortable. The other thing about the handles that I don't like is um, they're identical on both sides. So what that means for me is that if I'm not looking at the knife, right, if I'm processing game and I set the knife down and then I pick it back up, I, there's no way for me to index which side of the blade is up or down, right, because the handle feels exactly the same. Um, so with both of these knives, I have found myself trying to cut something with the back side of the knife. Not, uh, not great, okay. So, I'll do something with these handles. When I do, uh, I'll make another video about it. Hopefully, if I don't screw it up for a week at a time like I did with this one. So, so let me do this. Let me make a comparison between this Russell Green River Dadley knife and this... Sheffield made... Um, English deadly knife. Now this knife comes from a company called Captain Curry Limited uh, in Chichester, England. Uh, and this company sells um, boating, um, sailing equipment. And so Captain Curry sells this knife as a sailor's deck knife. That's why it has a lanyard on it, right? So the first thing you notice, of course, is the handle is longer, long enough to accommodate a lanyard loop. And it has um, finger molding, right? Which, which the American knives don't have. So this length actually is just about perfect for me right feels good in my hand it is however very thin so this Indian rosewood handle and here I'll let me show you the handle is longer right than the American knife but the tang is not necessarily well it's a little bit shorter than the American knife actually just a touch and on this Sheffield knife the, uh, the wood of the handle sticks out an inch and a quarter past the end of the tang. So, the other interesting thing about the English knife is the false edge. So the English knives have the false edges. Um, I've seen a, a quite a few different ones from different time periods and uh, they seem to all have a, a false edge. Maybe not all, but all of the ones that I've looked at. So, just like with the American knife, this jimping right here uh, is only on one side, right? The other side is complete flat grind. Same with the English knife. So, the jimping is on one side only, and so is the false edge. So, the false edge only has um, the bevel on one side. Now, cost comparison... Um, the English knife is more expensive, okay, and that's kind of an issue because this knife out of the box did not have a very sharp edge on it. I mean, it was sharp; it was acceptably sharp. Um, if you're if you're a sailor and you're going to cut rope or whatever, um, but I frankly expected more from a, an English knife made in Sheffield. So, there you have your comparisons. Uh, this knife was about $45 shipped 
uh, delivered, I should say. Um, and these were about $25 delivered. So for the money that you spend on these knives, on these Russell Green River knives, I don't think you can beat them. Um, even my um, old hickory five and a half inch hunter, which I'll also do a video on, I'm still kind of testing it, um, was not as sharp out of the box as these, as these two. Now Ontario, which makes old hickory, um, over the past, I guess, I don't know, I've probably only noticed it in the past 10 years or so. I've noticed that their edges are not that great anymore. So, but the great thing is it's a super high grade uh, carbon steel made in the USA and it takes a wonderful edge. So that has nothing to do with these knives. <laughs> um, I just wanted to show you um, these Russell Green River knives. Now I was turned on to these um, Green Rivers by James at Junkyard Fox. Uh, he's got a great channel. Uh, he's in uh, West Texas. I'll leave a link uh, to his channel and his partner in crime is um, Cuervo Negro who's also the guy who does the music that I use on on this channel so uh, together those two guys have an excellent channel uh, and Cuervo also has his own channel so I'll, I'll leave uh, I'll leave links to those by the way my background here is a piece of uh, tied buckskin or excuse me tanned buckskin um, with a little 50 caliber bullet hole in it <laughs> so all right folks thanks so much for joining me here in free america today um i hope everybody's surviving the wuhan and staying healthy and being careful god bless america